Strange Adventure. Seated around the table in the lounge car of the Starlight Limited, three men thoroughly enjoyed such talk as passed between men of the world. Allison Muir, the motion picture producer, then continued. Now, as I was saying, Lynn Lane is a cute enough kid, but she's no actress. Sure, I picked her up in a Kansas farm and took her to Hollywood, yeah. Now she's stuck and won't go back home. <laughs> Keeps begging me for parts. Jonathan Hawk of the Homicide Bureau turned to the impeccably dressed movie mogul. You seem to do very well with your collections, Mr. Muir. I understand you also make a hobby of antique knives. Ah, uh, yes, that's right, Mr. Hawk. I'd like to show them to you. Uh, conductor, uh, hand me that leather case there, will you? The conductor, the third man of the party, reached across the aisle for a small case and laid it upon the table. Muir opened it, displaying a unique collection of bladed weapons. He lifted each from its place and showed it to the two men. After a while, the conversation lulled. Muir stifled a yawn. Uh, uh, gentlemen, please excuse me. I'll see if I can get some sleep. I'll see you in the morning. The conductor rose and looked at his watch. Well, I guess I'd better take off, too. <laughs> Time to make my rounds. Inspector Hawk picked up a magazine and nodded to the two disappearing men. The police officer was starting the second chapter of his mystery thriller when a very frightened porter rushed into the lounge car. There's been a man killed in his bunk. He's been murdered, sir. Allison Muir had been stabbed to death. The conductor stepped to the side of the officer. I was on my way through the train when I noticed Muir's hand dangling from his bunk. Jonathan Hawk noted the clean-cut wound in the man's chest. Conductor, search the passengers, the crew in the car for the murder weapon. The conductor busily searched the bewildered group of passengers and members of the train crew. He finished at last and turned to the inspector. Well, I've searched everybody, but I can't find anything. I see. You say you searched everybody yourself? That's right, Inspector. Just like you told me to. Thank you. Now I must ask you to allow me to search you. And if I am right in my calculations, I'm going to hold you for murder. The police inspector was right in his calculations. In one of the conductor's pockets, he found a long-bladed clasp knife. Hawk confronted the trainman. You see, conductor, you said you would search the people and the car. But you hadn't had anyone search you. Besides being new to the art of murder, your nervousness and actions helped to give you away. The prisoner looked down at the floor of the swaying railway car, his face a blank mask. Yes, Inspector. I killed him. He was right in what he said a while ago in the lounge car. He took a sweet girl from her home, and he made promises that he never kept. I swore that someday I'd repay his cruelty and deceit. Well, you see, Inspector, Lynn Lane is my granddaughter. This is Pat McGinn in Hollywood, California, saying goodbye from my writer Charles Crowder and inviting you to listen again to another tale of Strange Adventure.